It is a time of year when exposure to deer ticks is particularly dangerous. That's because teeny tiny ticks known as nymphs that cause the most cases of Lyme disease are out. About the size of a poppy seed, these parasites are hard to spot, so they can go undetected. Another concern, the wet and cooler temperatures we've been experiencing actually helps ticks thrive. News and Maine's Vivian Lee shows us in this report. Ongoing wet weather and cooler temperatures are creating ideal conditions for deer ticks, which need 85% humidity to survive. At a time when young deer ticks, known as nymphs, are also becoming much more active. Griffin Dill, the manager of the Umaine Tick Lab, says the parasites are so tiny, they're practically invisible, making this part of the tick's life cycle the most lethal. That's kind of what makes that stage uh, you know, of particular concern because they can easily go unnoticed as they feed on us, on our kids, on our pets. This picture makes that point. This man from the Augusta area didn't see a nymph under his eye until he came home from a hike. Nymphs can transmit Lyme and other tick-borne illnesses. If they stay latched on undetected, they have more time to transmit the pathogens. The lab identifies ticks sent in from the public for free. And for a small fee, ticks are tested for the bacteria that causes Lyme and other co-infections, anaplasmosis and babesiosis. Researchers have recently begun testing for the Heartland virus, which can cause fever, fatigue, decreased appetite and headache, and can be carried by the Lone Star tick and Powassan. The virus is extremely rare and can lead to severe neurological problems such as brain or spinal cord swelling. There is also no cure. Very low numbers, you know, le less than a half a percentage point, uh, you know, testing positive for, for that. So we, we do know that is a, a rare illness, of course, a, a, a potentially very serious illness, um, but it is appearing to be rare in the tick population. Well, obviously, it's hard to share the story, but I think because it's you know, considered such a rare thing. I think it's very important to get the story out there. Amory Weymouth's husband, Bobby, died May 14th after being exposed to Powassan. Anne Marie, who did not want to go on camera, has been speaking to national news publications in an effort to raise awareness. She says her husband of 23 years didn't find a tick before his symptoms began. There's so many people that are living with weakened immune systems. And I just feel like they need to know just to be extra cautious. I wish, you know, we would have known a little bit more. Anne Marie is grateful humane researchers now have Powassan on their radar. Meanwhile, nymphs will be active until August before they transition into adults. While the rainy conditions may have been keeping people from heading outdoors, experts say always do tick checks, wear protective clothing, and use an EPA-registered repellent. Vivian Lee, New Center, Maine. A great reminder to do all those checks when you've been outside. And it's so hard, though, when those ticks are that so small. small. I mean, my dog has short hair, and even that, it's tough, tough to, to find them. You have to really just comb through and feel every bump, but oof. under the eye to see that tiny one. Yeah. All right, that is good.